Mountain time zone. The Aggies and the Wolfpack getting set to do battle for the 17th time. All time, and away we go. College football is back. Here inside Aggie Memorial Stadium, the Wolfpack out of the Mountain West Conference come calling against New Mexico State. So glad you could join us with Andre Ware. I'm Roy Philpott. Paul Carcaterra joins us on the sideline in just one minute. Big story coming into this game, the return of Jerry Kill. After a seven-year hiatus as a head coach, he returns to the Aggies to try to lift this program to new heights. Three stops, turning around programs at SIU, Northern Illinois, Minnesota, an athletic director for a brief period of time at SIU, interim head coach at TCU a season ago, two and two, including an upset against Baylor. And would you know it, he lands at New Mexico State in 2022 and a chance to turn things around here in Las Cruces, Andre. Yeah, he has fired up this fan base, Roy, to no, like no other. And players, they feel what he, they feel his energy. He's decided to take a different approach uh, with this job, seven years after his last, where he's gonna be more of a CEO type and really depend on the coaching staff and everyone else within the program to help him to run, run things, not just be the total voice himself. Gray, it's about 80 degrees, a slight breeze, no threat of rain. We've Perfect seen weather football. delays all day. You will not get one tonight. <laughs> we are ready to go. College football returns. Nevada won the coin toss and deferred. And a touchback will put the Aggies at the 25-yard line. Down to Paul Carcaterra. Paul. Roy, after that 2015 season, not many people thought Jerry Kill would be a head coach in college football again. He told us he'd be lying to us if he thought he wouldn't be emotional heading out of the tunnel for the first time again. And Coach Kill has that fire to coach. He's all about the players, always has been. Let me tell you, he had some players to get in the offseason. 45 new players, zero commits when he took the job. 45 freshmen and transfers combined. And when you talk to people, he's a program builder. High school coaches, junior college coaches want to send players to a guy like Jerry Kill, those players will get developed. Welcome back as a head coach, Jerry Kill. Diego Pavia, the starting quarterback for the Aggies. The screen pass on first down, sales incomplete. It'll bring up second and 10. And to Kark's point, you know, you just look at Jerry Kill and coming back, it, you gotta have relationships with high school coaches, junior college coaches. That's the foundation of recruiting. And he's got a ton of relationships. He's won everywhere he's been. I think it's no different right here at New Mexico State than any other place that he's been. Pavia also a winner, claimed a national championship in the junior college ranks just one year ago for New Mexico Military Institute. On second down, that last pass intended for Parker. He'll get it for a short gain, two, maybe three. Deadman the stop, give him four, and it quickly, it's third down. Yeah, we expected New Mexico State to come out running the football they've got a couple they, they go about three deep at running back just to kind of get this offensive line settled into things they come out slinging it around and now third down and eh, about medium is where you want to be this early in the game last pass was caught by Cord cordell david third down for pavia out of the shotgun has the ability to improvise Clean snap pocket breaks down and there he goes and this is what he does that's a first down for the Aggies and a punishing finish as well Andre. Well they go zone coverage and you see a lot of guys going to drop out in this zone coverage so that's going to be a big running lane a lot of green turf for Diego Pavia to pull it down make plays he's an experienced guy on the junior college level won a national championship last year but when you go zone coverage against a guy, an athletic quarterback, you are inviting him to pull it down and run. Mike Jones, the running back. Pavia certainly will fight you with that moxie. That was a word we heard a lot this week. In the flats for Jonathan Brady, it falls incomplete. That pass hit the turf. We're having a, some problems with trying to get that little swing pass completed. And to his left, I would actually go right with it. As a, as a play caller to just get him some completions, get him settled into this football game. Well, he's a runner, we saw it. You know, he's not trying to slide and, and miss guys, he's taking defenders on.
Star Thomas and Jamani Jones. A couple of backs in the backfield on second down. Great as this college football is back. We've seen upsets today already, as we expected. And he make it all night for Pavia. On the run, tosses one, floats it, caught into plus territory down to the 26-yard line. And the reception made by Jordan Parker for 36 yards. Well, Jerry Kill's got to be impressed with not only that play, but how this offensive series has started. Look at the protection for Diego Pavia. No one getting to him. He's back there all day surveying the field, and then finally, this is a dime throw, Roy, uh, to kind of tie that baby up. What a throw by the quarterback and the protection by the offensive line, which was with a was a question mark coming in here by this coaching staff. I love playing in this offense. Five, all five passes. For this Mexico State team. A beautiful dime dropped in. Now they'll run it. Off left tackle. Another punishing finish. New Mexico State physical. Out of the gate. Mack the stop, but not before he picked up six, almost seven. New Mexico State, number zero. Lost his helmet during the play. He must sit out for one. Yeah, out of Northeast Oklahoma, AM, a junior college transfer. Runs well for a guy with his type of size at 6'2, about 225 in that 230 range. And giving Nevada some problems here early of bringing him down. Look back coming off an eight and four campaign. And welcome to Las Cruces, New Mexico. Those joining us now on ESPN2, New Mexico State and Nevada. Andre Ware, Roy Philpott, Paul Carcantera here with you. They're just trying to sneak. Jamani Jones underneath. And it's like Maurice Wilmer, the line middle linebacker, was there to make the stop. Just nowhere really for him to go. So he's trying to keep this defense honest. Both the run and the pass. Third down and three. Toss. Caught in the backfield and brought down. That was Tyson Williams, the nickelback. Well, what it does is it makes this, instead of a chip shot field goal, it's going to make it a little bit tougher here. They get great penetration at the line of scrimmage. Nice job. A couple of uh, Wolfpack players coming up, making making the stop. Ethan Albertson checks in. 17 of 22 a year ago in the field goal department. Has plenty of leg, a 50-yarder against Alabama in Tuscaloosa. And a 43-yard effort from the right hash here. Just underway, opening possession of the game. And that one sails wide right, and it is no good. Nevada's defense finds a way to make a stand. We talk about getting out of harm's way and a, a big negative play and then forcing a missed field goal here. Where you get some pressure on every field goal. Who knows what goes into that or when field goal kickers miss, but you're getting pressured. And it was a great drive for New Mexico State initially going right down the field, getting themselves close to the red zone. And then all of a sudden, Nevada turns him away, and here comes their offense. Your early thoughts on Diego Pavia. Impressive, and right? Very, very impressed with with, uh, with that young man and, and operating the system. Jay Hillingworth checks in as the starting quarterback for the Wolfpack, the transfer out of Oklahoma State. First down, handoff, Toa Tawa, now in his fifth season. Tower last year had a huge year. Um, averaged almost five yards a carry in 2021. Had his best game, 170 yards against Toledo, where he had three touchdown runs in that game. But you talk about a physical downhill runner. He will not shy away from contact himself. Four-yard game. Second down and six. Hillingworth. Off of play action. Shows you the arm straight. That one sails out of bounds. Yeah, you talk about arm strength. I've watched him during warm-ups. He can really move the ball around. He can hit every blade of turf in this stadium. And strong arm. He's got good touch. Moves around well. He just looks the part. 
as confident in what they want to do offensively. Five minutes in, last pass intended for Tyrese Mack. Third down for Nevada. The top of the screen, you've got the deep third and that side of the field available to you right now. Maltel in motion. Billingworth, clean pocket, flings it incomplete. Bell, the intended receiver. Well, he had B.J. Castillo, who was running like a hookup along the sideline at about 12 yards, just impatient. Maybe felt a little pressure, but Castillo, who's going to be a weapon for him all season long and certainly throughout the game tonight, just wait him out a little bit longer. Saw head coach Ken Wilson his first season leading Nevada after arriving from Oregon. Have my college roommate's son back to catch this punt. And from the 28 crossing the 30, a 42 yard punt, a five yard return. Second possession for the Aggies. Coming up when we return to Las Cruces after this. Well, certainly it's going to be a new look depth chart this season after former head coach Jay Norvell was able to use the transfer portal to take some of his players at Nevada to Colorado State. 15 in all transferring or decommitting from Nevada to head down to Fort Collins. Also nice staff members as well following Jay Norvell down to the Rams program, Andre. And here's Ken Wilson, year number one. Hey, 19 years as an assistant at Nevada. And you see the returning production Ranking near the bottom of the FBS this, this is a, season. This is essentially his dream job. Yeah. You spend 19, almost 20 years at a place, and then you go out, you come back as the head coach. Job good for him. Pavia back in, a quarterback out of the pistol, deep handoff. Jones barrels ahead for a gain of three yards on first down. You know, gentlemen, when you think of Ken Wilson and his journey, he spent the 19 years, but he told us this week it was pivotal that he got experience outside of Nevada and being a defensive coordinator for Mike Leach at Washington State and then being on Mario Cristobal's staff at Oregon. He learned how to recruit at a high level, and his anticipation and his expectations are to recruit Pac-12 type of players to Nevada. Yeah, I think Kark, is, he went out and under another couple of head coaches, He's appreciated, and that's when you are, when you finally leave. Oh, you can go coach for those guys, but you can certainly coach here. It's Parker in motion. The vintage option look for Pavia crossing the 40. He stopped there to bring up third down and short. What he did in junior college and showing you some toughness. I just don't know if I like Diego Pavia taking this many, this many hits this early in the game. Just getting right downhill with a little option here, and. They get it third down and short where New Mexico State giving themselves a chance to pick up a first down here and can keep this drive going. Aggies 2 and 10 last season. Still independent this campaign. They'll move into Conference USA next year in 2023. It's going to be huge for them. We had a great conversation. New Mexico State's athletic director moments before the kick. On the screen, it's corralled by Jones. That's a first down. Stopped at the 45 by Mack. Finally completing that little swing pass. Threw one earlier in the previous drive to Jonathan Brady that found its way to the turf. And there, when you need it the most on third down and short, he's able to come up with it to Jones. They had zone drops again. Everybody's backing away from the line of scrimmage. All he had to do was really catch it, reel it in, and get himself started up the field to pick up the first down. What was your level of nerves like? Your first career start, like what we're seeing for Pavia oh, tonight. It, it was it, they, they're there. Don't don't get it twisted. He is he was very very nervous coming into this. We'll play action, pressure, flunk plus territory. And driven out of bounds, crossing the 50. Give him a gain of eight. It was Zeke Robbins. But as soon as you get him, when he took that big hit where he ran for a first down in the previous drive, they went away, and it allows you to do stuff like this. Accurate passes is where receivers can catch and turn up the field and make plays after the catch for you. You don't want in that situation to throw it behind him and then he gets tackled right away. Give him a chance to get you a few extra yards. Third time tonight that Jordan Parker's been targeted. That's his second grab now from the 48-yard line. Good atmosphere here at Aggie Memorial Stadium. 
Play action again. Pass is caught. That'll move the sticks. Well, Near side. I like the body language right now, Diego Fabian. Building some confidence. The coaching staff giving him some stuff. Tim Beck, the offensive coordinator, calling some stuff to kind of get his footing in this game. Dominic Jacinto with the grab in the first down reception. This one incomplete far side. And the receiver's got to do a little bit better job of hanging on to the ball. He threw a couple early in that first drive that found it's their way to the turf. That one, Chris Bellamy should have come up with a catch and, and maybe even make, you make a guy miss, who knows what happens. Stops a string of four straight completions for Pavia. Compares himself to Johnny Manziel, also patterns his play after Marcus Mariota, he said this week. His ability to improvise and extend plays, certainly we will see that on display this evening. Thomas in the backfield. The roll the pocket. Pavi off the back foot, fires a completion. And crossing the 40 for another positive game. That will be Cordell David. This, this crowd likes his style of play. You know, and he's moving the team down the field. Two drives now, both two drives and in, in consecutive drives. He's gotten this offense past midfield. Now the job is let's find a way onto the scoreboard. As you start to put a, a lot of pressure on the visiting team, Nevada, if you're able to do that early, they're on the road. Nevada victorious in Reno last year, 55-20. Look at the slot receiver right here. All kinds of cushion. Pavio looks that direction. Pass is caught. Needs to make a man miss. Driven down near the 30. Close to a first down, and I believe he got it. Deadman the tackle on Jordan Parker. For a soft zone coverage. And Diego Pavia, he's recognizing it. And I got to mention, love the way he's playing and settling into this game. Look at the soft cushion. Well, both slot receivers right there, the guy in the middle, and he's just going to find it. Great timing, and he's been that all night long. The ball's coming out. What that tells you is that he's comfortable within this offense to execute and get the ball out. Three first downs on this drive already after moving 50 yards on the opening possession. Still scoreless in Las Cruces. Star Thomas with an angle and a lane. Well, that two yards, and that's it. The tackle by Drew Watts. Yeah, we talked about they go three deep at that position. We saw Jones there, Thomas, and then Watkins, the TCU transfer, will play as well. Talented group that uh, they don't mind playing either one at any time. How many times, Trey, are we going to use the word transfer in this game a lot. and this I, I, season? We're going to use it a lot going forward for this season, tonight, and years to come. It is a brave new world in college football. Tenth play of the drive coming up on second down. Pavia incomplete on the slant. Through traffic, Tyson Williams providing ample coverage against Parker. Boy, I was looking at Bellamy with that press, that press coverage up top. Big receiver at 6'2", 200 pounds. It's designed to go the other way, but at any time you find press coverage, you can spin it, get the three-step drop you need, and spin it outside. Third down and eight, what do you like here? I, I like a little, you spread them out a little bit and maybe run it with Diego Pavia. Maybe a little quarterback draw here. If you get the look that you want, pick up about half of it and maybe think about going for it on fourth down. Two for two on third down conversions on this possession for New Mexico State. Pavia rifles a pass caught short of the line to gain. And stopped near the 24-yard line by Tyson Williams, who's been active. It was Jonathan Brady with the grab. Going to be just shy on fourth down, so kind of to our our recipe of get, about, get most of it and then go for it here on fourth down. Now, this is where I would give him a run-pass option, try to get him on the edges and see what he can do with his legs. If he picks it up, go ahead and run it. If a receiver pops open in front of you, deliver the football. Fourth down and two. Jerry Kill will roll the dice. Field goal kicker already missed from 43. Pavia pulls it out, buys some time, heaves it in zone, intercepted. Picked off by Esisima. The Wake Forest transfer. 
And a little celebratory dance in the corner of the end zone. It's about a four-yard advantage for New Mexico State. And the reason being, they're going to get the ball at the 20, would have had it at the 24 had he not gotten the ball out of there. Now the two-headed monster is back at running back in Reno this year. Toatala, Devontae, Lee, Andre Ware, pick your poison. Yeah, two tough downhill runners. And Toatala averaged just under five yards a carry last, last season. And then you bring in Devontae Lee. They, the only difference is the numbers on the back of the jersey. They both run with physical styles. Both will take on defenders in the open field. And they are both you know, super powerful going between the tackles. Yeah, five feet, nine inches tall, 225 pounds, put the difference between yeah. the two running backs. Low center of gravity, right? That makes a difference. I think Tawa would be, you know, the, the, the bigger back, but he goes about 218. He doesn't try to make you miss. He's going to take you on and try to put the pads on you a little bit. Brief stoppage and play our referee tonight, Steve Barron. See what this conversation is concerning. Second possession for Nevada, three and out on its first drive. Game is, the game is going to be put on a temporary delay because there's lightning within eight miles. Now, the unfortunate news broken there by this veteran officiating crew. My goodness. I have not seen a single flash. I, I don't even see a cloud in the sky, but eight miles away, we wouldn't see it. And we mentioned the Nevada running backs. Scoreless game, 329 to go in our first quarter. Toa Tawa, Devontae Lee. In their careers, over 4,200 yards, 43 touchdowns. That is production. It is. And this coaching staff, uh, Coach Ken Wilson was excited that they were still in the cupboard when he got here. And he had to do some, some re-recruiting to keep some players uh, here, but you know, Tawa's brother, Vaya Tawa, he's a running backs coach here. He did a pretty good job of keeping Toa in tow. And then Devontae Lee, he decided to finish his career as Nevada Wolfpack player as well. So, two really, really good players that they can depend on this year. Now, the breeze has picked up, notably in the last couple of seconds. Step aside and take a break. Scoreless ball game in Las Cruces, 3.29 remaining in our first quarter and a weather delay coming up. They're staying focused, so I'm just excited for the game tonight. And what I love about Bianca Belair, the realest, the dopest, the coolest superstar that I've come into contact with in a while. You know, she said, I wanted to be unapologetically myself at WrestleMania 38. And so what did she do? She invited the Texas Southern Marching Band, the Ocean of Soul, on the stage to play her theme song as she come out at, came out as the realest in the game. And Jay, you know what? What's up? She said, thank you. You're welcome for that picture. D. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Davis eluding harm. There's a late flag on the play. And let's see what this is going to be all about. Tiffany with the champ down on the sidelines, huh? Yeah, gave me a little shout out. Got to take a picture with her. The EST of the WWE, she's known. And very talented athlete, RG3. Ran, she ran track at the University of Tennessee mm -hmm. on the championship team. Mm-hmm. The result of the play is a first down. After the play was over, personal foul. Late hand oh. out of bounds. Number one, offense. It's a 15 yard penalty. Will be wow. first and 10. Jeremiah Hickson with that That's yeah. momentary lapse of judgment. Completely unnecessary. D. Davis. Moved in Las Cruces, which allows us to get back to the Nevada New Mexico State game. Scoreless in the first quarter still. Let's send it out to Roy Philpot and Andre Ware. Well, I'm certainly glad you decided to stick around with us, Mother Nature. Interfering with week zero once again. Primetime Mountain Time Zone. 329 to go in our first quarter in a scoreless affair between Nevada and New Mexico State. Time of possession, ball control has been a big story thus far. Andre Ware, New Mexico State, couple of drives, no points to show for it. Yeah, excellent uh, 
first couple of series for New Mexico State, but no points to show for it. Cross midfield twice, and then they get uh, get that second drive going, and it leads to an interception. There you go, Diego Bobby. Bobby yeah. yeah, just man-to-man -man coverage across the board here. He's trying to make something happen by just throwing the ball up to the end zone, let his receiver try to make a play, and it ended up in the hands of a Wolfpack player. Isaiah Asissima, transfer from Wake Forest, reeled in the pick. We're just about set, ready to go. We stop playing 831 local time. We will resume at 904. I'm no mathematician, but about a half hour. I'm shocked that the teams have already kind of come back on the field. Usually you need a few more minutes of warm up to get yourself going back in the kind of frame of mind that you were in when the game was delayed. But they're, they seem to be ready to go. And if they're ready, we're ready. We are ready. Shane Ellingworth making the start, the transfer out of Oklahoma State, of course, trying to replace production of Carson Strong from a year ago. We expect to see Nate Cox as well at some point in time. Both these guys transferred in from other programs, Louisiana Tech and the Cowboys. Yeah, and both guys are, have big frames. Ellingsworth goes about 6'6", uh, and then Nate Cox goes at 6'9". Got to be the tallest combination of quarterbacks or two quarterbacks in a program across the country. Big lane for Devontae Lee. Holding penalty is going to be the call with the flag on the field near the 21, our first infraction of the game. And it's thrown right in the middle of the formation. Offense, number 69, 10-yard penalty, of course, the previous spot, first down. Bryce Peterson, the guilty party, the starting center, the transfer from Akron. And this is where it's to the defense's advantage to come after Nevada right now. You got them backed up, first down and forever. You start dialing up a little pressure on Shane Ellingworth. Ellingworth, a California native. To your handoff, Lynette, maybe a yard, possibly two. Stopped by Trevor Brohart, a name we should be calling often tonight as Lee has a short game. Yeah, Coach Kill talked to us about Brohart. He said, hey, he was one of the players in this program that he had to kind of keep because everybody else respected him. And he knew once he won him over and this coaching staff, he gave the coaching staff his blessing that everybody else would kind of fall in line. And that's exactly how things went this offseason. So a tower the running back. And through the A-gap, he plunders. Stopped at the 15. Uh, La <clears throat> Three-yard gain, and now third down coming up for Nevada. It'll be third and 15. And this is where, if you're in Nevada, you don't want to try to force anything here and wind up turning the ball over and giving a short field to New Mexico State. So you want to protect it. A long way to go to pick up a first down. And then if you're New Mexico State, you want to keep yourself you know, between where the ball is and the first down marker, make sure that you make the stop. A couple of tight ends lined up near side of your screen. Tower the running back on third and long as he shifts around. Illingworth off the back foot. The crosser is there well short of the line to gain. And tripped up at the 15 by Cyrus Dumas. Goes Tyrese Mack. Excellent open field tackle. And doing a nice job of keeping everything in front of him, in front of the first down marker, and then making a nice stop. Have some pretty good field position to start drive number three. Second punt coming from Matt Freen. Outs for New Mexico State, or rather for Nevada. Lawrence Dixon back deep to receive the punt as Freem sends it to the 36. Dixon, an empty move. And jolted down near the 48-yard line, a punt of 49, a return of 12. I have known that young man a long time. Don't forget, coming up next Saturday, the top matchups of the day highlight the ABC schedule. Oregon and Georgia from the ATL, Saturday afternoon at 3.30, 12.30 Pacific. And then later on that night, fifth-ranked Notre Dame takes on number two Ohio State. Top five matchup from the Horseshoe, 7.30 Eastern, the place to be, Columbus, Ohio, the coaching debut of Marcus Freeman. 
we will see exactly how explosive Ohio State's offense can be and in 2022. They are explosive. That's going to be a tough game for Notre Dame. And like Ohio State at, at home this year, Oregon went in there and got one early last year. I don't think it's going to happen in 2022. Javier remains on the field. A quarterback, Monty Jones, into plus territory with a penalty marker down. Are you? As false start on Cordell David going in motion. Looked like he started his approach towards the line of scrimmage. Offense, five players in the backfield, five-yard penalty, first down. You know, Andre, you were mentioning mentally tough. When you think about his journey, he was a third-string quarterback before winning that JUCO National Championship at New Mexico Military Institute. Two-time state champion in wrestling. What I love about him, too, we talk about all the mental and physical toughness. He told Jerry Kill, yeah. it doesn't matter who you bring in here, I'm going to beat him out. And you love that from, your, from the quarterback. A little confidence coming in. It doesn't matter. You're 6'6", six, 6'5", six, six, five, five, It doesn't matter who you bring in here. I'm going to be the quarterback of this program. And so far, that is, that's exactly what's happened with Diego. New Mexico State has Bobby. called the first half. 30 seconds, 30 seconds. 36 seconds to go in our first quarter after a 34-minute weather delay. Kind of a helter-skelter restart after the uh, lightning struck at around 8.31 local time. And Kind of New Mexico State can catch in here. Yeah, I'm just surprised at how fast the teams got right back out of the locker room and right on the field. That's That lets you know it's been a long time. They've been chopping at the bit to get back out and play games, a lot of off-season work. Uh, and, hey, it's it's time to let all that training out right now. See, Pavia's numbers, native of Albuquerque, staying in his home state. His mom said this week that she was planning to purchase about 100 tickets for friends and family. Wow. And so, I mean, this was an emotional debut at the FBS level for the Pavia family, of course. Purchase or make it <laughs> open up a way to an avenue for them to buy tickets. That get a little expensive every home game. You do it once, they start to expect it. Too. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Yeah, 100 tickets, that would well, be a lot. quite a penny. Yeah. Parker goes in motion after the penalty. First and 15. Low toss. Somehow corralled in a pickup of two. Crossing the 45. Williams and Bentley Sanders transfer from USF with the tackles. It shows you a little bit of the arm strength of Diego Pavia. That was thrown from the far hash. A little quick screen out to David. Usually those are thrown into the short side of the field, so trying to catch Nevada, maybe thinking a different way defensively. Should be the final play of our first quarter. That was a third grab by David, just 11 yards to show for it. And we are scoreless 15 minutes in here in Las Cruces. That's the end of the first quarter. Timeout. Well, the bad weather pushing aside for the moment. Our first half rolls right along after this. Scoreless in Las Cruces tonight. Fifteen minutes in, back in beautiful Las Cruces, New Mexico, the land of enchantment. We are scoreless. Andre Weirroy, Phil Pot, Paul Carcaterra. Brief weather delay already in the books. New Mexico State has moved the football early. No points to show for it up to this point in time. And now gaining Nevada 94 to 9. They'll have it to start the second period. Second down and 13. Diego Pavia first start of the FBS level. And a screen pass is dropped. Make it third down and long. And that's Watkins, the transfer from TCU that they brought in. And he had a wall in front of him. All he had to do was handle the screen pass, and he was going to run for a long long time. Lonnie Watkins recruited to TCU as a defensive back initially. A lot of staffers from Fort Worth coming here to New Mexico State. That may be the reason he Yeah, I was thinking it. That, that's why you saw that big smile on my face. Third down at 13. Pavia heaves one deep and it's incomplete. Double coverage. 
in that direction. Parker, the intended target. See Robbins deep down the field. Oh, we think alike. I was thinking that maybe that's why he was recruited as a defensive back. He can't catch that little screen pass. I mean, it was set up in front of him big time. Well, New Mexico State wasting outstanding field position. And now three drives where you feel like the Aggies probably should have some kind of points to show they, for they've something. Had, they've had excellent field position. Even when they've had to start in their own end of the field, they've marched it past midfield. But it has not turned into points just yet. And with that, every possession that you don't get points on the board, it's going to give some, some confidence to Nevada. Josh Carlson and to punt things away for New Mexico State. A wobbler. Finley Sanders with a fair catch made at the 13. And after a punt of 41. Step aside once more. Second quarter underway, still scoreless in Las Cruces. This is the University of Nevada, Reno. Welcome back to Las Cruces, Nevada's Christian Swain, a senior defensive back, spent the past year volunteering for students with intellectual disabilities to attend college and earn a certificate in the university and disabilities. He provided support to students in the program by attending classes and helping them with all their assignments and presentations. More on this in a minute, Roy. Clark, thank you very much. Penalty marker down as Nevada begins this possession with its worst field position of the night. Offside, defense number 93 lined up in the neutral zone. Five yard penalty, first down. You know, Christian helped create checklists, songs, and sayings to memorize all the students' duties. And he told me this week, social inclusion for those with disabilities and having them part of society without feeling left out, that's what drives him, he said. He goes by the quote every day, who am I to judge when I myself doesn't walk perfectly? And an amazing story, amazing. Clark. Lee's going to lose a couple of yards after the penalty made it first and five, the offsides call against New Mexico State. Well, you got to kind of take your hat off to the job that New Mexico State has done here in the first half, both on, on both sides of the football, but unable to put points on the board. I mentioned it earlier, you're going to give Nevada a little bit of confidence the longer they stay in the game. Illingworth, the pump fake, and the pass broken up at the last minute. Bryce Jackson snuck in there, the graduate student, the transfer out of UNLV in 32 and Black getting it done. Who is Bryce Jackson? Well, career high 11 tackles last season against UTSA, and boy, he, he broke on that football big time. Third down and seven, last pass intended for Jamal Bell, and here we go. Aggie showing pressure. Bell in motion now in the slot, and the snap gets away. Ellingworth retreats into the end zone for the safety. And what's been a wacky week zero, that trend will continue our first points of the evening. How about a two-pointer? <laughs> well, the uh, defense says, hey, you guys won't put any points on the board? We'll go put some up for you. I mean, this is over Ellingworth's head. Right here, just a little bit wide right of him, and he does the smart thing. Instead of trying to pick it up and make a play and turn it into a disaster, go ahead and take the safety, and then come back when you come back on your next possession. But smart play there by by the quarterback Shane Illingworth. Dre was a year ago up in Reno, Nevada beat New Mexico State 55 to 28 with Carson Strong just getting it done in so many different ways. Yeah. This year it's 2 nothing in yeah. our second quarter. And that's exactly why I wasn't a big fan of the shotgun. I don't know if I could play in today's era where everybody runs the shotgun because I know what he's doing. The ball's there and fans are thinking, well, he should have caught it, could have caught it on, on the snap. But his eyes are looking at coverage. And so the snap's coming as you're trying to look at coverage. Two things going on at once, and you take your eyes away just long enough. The result is that, especially when you're backed up on that end of the field. Uh, with the safety, of course, free kick from your own 20-yard line. We get Mexico's down there. Call me a play where I can get under center, yeah, please. certainly. I feel you on that one. First safety recorded by New Mexico State in six seasons. 
The Aggies will get the football back with pretty good field position. So a couple of drives, one in a missed field goal, how it ended, the other one in an interception. And now the defense comes through in a weird sort of way. Matthew Killiam on to kick this one away. Parker and Grady back deep to receive. Parker. Jettison down at the 24. Now don't forget, coming up next Sunday night, Labor Day weekend, the only college football matchup on the schedule. We've got at Florida State and LSU at the Caesars Superdome in New Orleans. Brian Kelly makes his debut as head coach of the Tigers. Action is side coverage begins 7.30 Eastern on ABC, also on the ESPN app. Florida State, of course, Mike Norvell, year number three. Impressive early today in their win against Duquesne in week zero earlier today. Jordan Travis, Jaden Daniels, a transfer from Arizona State, slated to get the start. And I'll tell you what, plenty of pit potential between those two, Dre. Yeah, I saw Jaden Daniels last year. He can throw it around a little bit. As well as Jordan Travis and a lot of pressure on both programs to get out the gate on a good note. Star Thomas in the backfield on first down and a timeout will be called by the Aggies. New Mexico State has called their second timeout of the half. Full timeout. Well, uh, Coach Kill is not happy having to spend that second timeout. Step aside, 13-33 remaining in our first half. Well, we take a look at the incredible sea line, the Georgia Aquarium, that has been picking games in college football this year. Notice I said the Georgia Aquarium, yeah. the win for Georgia against Oregon, no shocker, Georgia Tech over Clemson. You buying that one? No, not at all. That's Diego, the sea line. You take a look at the incredible Labor Day weekend slate featuring Georgia, Oregon, of course, Saturday primetime, Notre Dame, Ohio State, Sneak, that top five matchup. Sneaky good game in the top right corner, Utah and Florida. I think that's going to be a heck of a football game. Billy Napier making his head coaching debut in Gainesville. Utah probably could have won the Rose Bowl last season yeah. against Ohio State, putting up those massive offensive numbers. Trendy pick right now to reach the playoff. Pavia, come on. And hit hard, driven out of bounds to the 25. He has taken some shots here in the first half of this ball game. And can't outflank the defense. Nevada does a nice job of kind of keeping him lateral, not allowing him to turn up the field, and barely got back to the line of scrimmage. Now you're trying to get about half of it here if you're New Mexico State. Set yourself up for third meeting. Star Thomas flank out. Javi out. Sign quarterback keeper. And there he goes. Penalty marker is down. Javi hit out of bounds near midfield. No penalty marker is flown there just yet, but this one could be coming back. Yeah, it's right in the area of holding, right in the middle of the formation. But you got North, excuse me, uh, New Mexico State. Clapping saying it's against Nevada. It's a gain of 23 yards, and let's see. They stand here. You can see how he excites, you know, teammates, right? That Illegal block below the waist. Defense number six. 15-yard penalty will be added to the end of the run. It'll be first down. And Tyson Williams coming in a little bit low to, to avoid being blocked. Maybe diving at a player's legs. Rush yardage and the penalty yardage combined to make it a 38-yard gain, and the Aggies are in business, Andre. What oh, a heck of a job. They're across midfield once again. Can they turn it into points? Thomas, the running back, once again. Operating near the 36. Inside give crossing the 35 goes Thomas, the sophomore. Some of these handoffs underneath. If Diego Pavia shows it to Thomas and then pulls it out, he's got the corner. He's got the edge that he needs. And 
be surprised at some point if that's a play call from Tim Beck, the offensive coordinator. Show it inside and let get the quarterback on the edge. Second down and eight. Full man front for the Wolfpack. Time for Pavia off the back foot, heaves it in the air and intercepted. Second pick thrown by Pavia. Bentley Sanders, a transfer from USF, reels it in, number 20 in white. I love the receivers that caught the ball with their hands, Roy. You let it get on your body in a crowded area, that's exactly what could happen. Across the middle of the field, you're going to body catch one or catch it against your shoulder pads. It bounces in the air, and the end result, Bentley Sanders with his first interception of the season. Simple catch should be made. And you're trying to catch that against your body if you're Cordell David. It bounces off you and into the hands of Sanders. Dre, as a quarterback, as an offensive player, you make three trips into plus territory and you come away with no points on those three occasions. I mean, that kind of takes a toll on you, doesn't it? Well, if I'm Pavia, see here what Nevada has going, and I think they're going to get called, and New Mexico State's going to get called for 12 men on the field. Didn't have a guy get off in time. Castile on the jet sweep. But if I'm Diego Pavia, and that example of what you just described happens, go to my group say, look, don't get frustrated. We can move the ball against these guys. We've just got to take care of it. Two turnovers when they've moved past midfield. So just stay patient, work within what's going on offensively, and we'll get it in the end zone. But you have to keep them believing that you can move the football. Substitution infraction, defense had 12 players. That five-yard penalty will be enforced. It'll be first down. So instead of second and three, they'll opt for first and five. Yeah, just one. A player trying to get off the field here right around the 25-yard line or so, and he just didn't make it. Would have made it had he just been full speed. He's creeping off the field. Get off the field, <laughs> homie. Hey, it's week zero. It's a soft launch from what I've been told. Everybody's trying to figure things out. <laughs> Got lightning delays across the country. One here tonight in Las Cruces, New Mexico. Hand off inside, and there's a crease and big yardage. All the way ahead to midfield. And there he is, Toa Tawa, his first big gainer of the evening. And here comes Tempo for the Wolfpack. Yeah, Tempo, big, big hole opened up along the right side. Bryce Peterson, the, the center. Trey Hamilton, the right tackle, opened up a nice big hole. Tawa again with a full head of steam and another first down. Stopped at the 36. This is what you had to be afraid of if you're a New Mexico State fan. Not scoring when you get past half, half field or midfield and then allowing Nevada to stay in this ball game. You press the X button here again to run the same play. No, play action. A nifty play calling there by Derek Sage in this Nevada offense. Quick pitch and catch results in six yards. Stop by Chris Ojo. That probably would have handed it off again, but nice job of play calling there. When you, by Coach Sage, when you're talking about keeping New Mexico State on their heels a little bit, where they don't know exactly what's coming at them. First reception by a tight end in Cooper Schultz, one of eight tight ends on this roster. Again, moving with pace. Devontae Lee bursts ahead. Devontae Lee stays on it. There he goes towards the end zone for the touchdown. How fast was that Nevada catching fire on that possession? So Atawa got it started. Devontae Lee gets it in the end zone, but he needs to go over and thank number four, B.J. Castile, the wide receiver, who throws one heck of a block to free him up. He'll come into your screen. You see him speed up and throw the block that frees Devontae Lee where he gets himself into the end zone. What a block. Love the unselfish players, man. Love them. Dirty work of wide receivers getting the job done on the perimeter. Talton banks home the extra point. Our first touchdown comes quickly from the Wolfpack, Andre. Yeah, great job of blocking by the offensive line. And then count the receivers in there along with them. And B.J. Castile deserves every bit of the credit.
Big touchdown run for Devontae Lee. Nevada leading New Mexico State by a score of 7-2. First touchdown of the night for either side just over 10 minutes to go. Fast moving first half with the exception of that lightning delay. And you see those last four plays. Nevada catching fire. Took less than 90 seconds to score the game's first touchdown on that possession. Four plays in 80 yards and Lee capping it off from 32 yards out. Huge runs and finally stopped messing around with the passing game a little bit and turned around and gave it to the strength of the offense, which are the two guys that play running back. Jordan Parker, Jonathan Brady back deep to receive this kick coming from Matthew Killian. It's a five-point lead for the Wolfpack. Won eight games last year, but the roster has turned over in many different ways after the departure of Jay Norvell to Colorado State. Ben Wilson taking over year number one, his first year as a head coach. And Parker near the goal line. Brought down crossing the 15 after a 16-yard return. Now coming up Monday nights, the second of the Chick-fil-A kickoff games at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Down to the ATL, Dabo Sweeney, number four Clemson, take on Georgia Tech. Head your way at 8 Eastern on ESPN. Also on the app, coverage starts at 7 Eastern as well. Well, now the pressure is on the other side of the field in the form of New Mexico State because all those nice drives that you had that didn't, didn't finish with points, now you're going to start to feel a little bit of pressure to have to get some, some, uh, some points on the scoreboard. Well, that's what Jerry Kill and offensive coordinator Tim Beck told us when Diego Pavia has been under pressure in preseason camp. That's when he's responded. We're starting field position of the night for the Aggies. Operating out of the pistol. The inside give, and that's one, maybe two, and that's it. So Jamani Jones trying to get something going on the ground for New Mexico State. Yeah, and on the early downs, Nevada is kind of crowding the line of scrimmage. Seven, eight in the box. Going to dare you to, to throw the football here, force Diego Pavia to pick it up and throw it. And especially where they are in terms of field position wise, you really don't want to make a mistake if you're New Mexico State here. And fake it to Jones. Pavia again floats one deep. And it is picked off at the 46. Intercepted the second of the game for Isaiah as Isima. Second interception for him, and he's just reading, reading the quarterback who's hanging the ball up, and that's the second time that he just hung it up into coverage, and Isima was in pretty good position all along. You're trying to you know, really hope that your receivers will make a play for you. No one in the area except Isam. Now, if I'm on the receiving end of this, if I'm in Nevada, and I'm sit sending my quarterback onto the field, to Shane Aylingworth, I'm going deep right here. Take a shot. Sudden change at midfield, though they're in a run formation, I'm going. I'm dialing up what gets me to the end zone the fastest. How about the turnover trident? Three picks for Nevada so far, including two by Isaiah Azizima. Vocal leader for this defense, and he has come up enormous tonight. Illingworth, nowhere to run, dumps it off to Mack. And Mack's going to pick up first down yardage and a couple of more. All the way down to the 40. Bullied his way down there. And some help by a couple of offensive linemen as well to escort him past the first down marker. But... Looking downfield, nothing there, and decides to just kind of dump it off underneath. 12-yard pass play, longest of the night for Illingworth. Tawa, punishing finish again, a gain of four yards on first down. Hey, we're seeing this running game from Nevada really heat up. The two-headed monster, but credit the offensive line. They had one returner starter in Aaron Frost, and he was hurt in camp a couple of weeks ago. This is all new starters, Andre. They call themselves a union, and they're earning their wages. 
Illingworth play action. How about the arm strength there? Pinpoint accuracy inside the 20. Nevada entering the red zone. The stop by Crump after the grab by Mack. Yeah, and the Cards point, it was three big runs that got this thing going. A 24-yarder by Toa, 13-yarder, and then all of a sudden, Lee comes in and caps it with a 32-yard touchdown run. But he's right. It's all because of the play of what's going on up front by the union, the offensive line of Nevada. And Cart might as well have been a quarterback back in the day because you quarterbacks always compliment the offensive lineman. Like, you always bring it up to make sure those guys are getting their due respect. you got to make sure they're taken care of, man. Tala stopped at the 11. Another quality pickup. Nevada looks like a different yeah. offense the last two drives. What you like is that you got those five new guys that Cart talked about, but when you have downhill runners like Toa and Lee, then you don't need a whole lot of in a big hole to go. They're just coming right downhill. Give me a little crease to get through. And that's exactly what's happening now for Nevada. And they're starting to take advantage of things in this running game. After a seven-yard pickup, operating out of the pistol once again, Illingworth hands it off to Atala. Fifth-year senior, also a father. Vontae Lee, also a dad. The two have a couple of young toddlers that they are very proud of that kind of keep them grounded, Andre. They'll do it. They'll ground you and they'll... They'll make you proud of them at times. And there are times they make you want to take some tweezers and pull out what little hair you have. <laughs> 32. Vontae Lee, the running back. Eight in the box for New Mexico State. There goes Lee straight ahead, first down and then some. First and goal for the Wolfpack, a new team coming out of the weather delay and a chance to go up by two scores here. Boy, they have really just kind of turned this game over to the offensive line. And just letting them fire off the ball, breaks a couple of tackles. He is doing some damage. When they get down inside or around the, the red zone, it's been Lee that they've kind of turned the keys to the car over to. He stays on the field, gets the call again, pushing the pile towards the five, inside the five. They jolted down near the three. It'll be second and goal from there. He's the, he's the battering ram, so to speak. 230 pounds at 5'9", big lower body, which makes it tough to, to bring him down one-on-one. -on -one. be time for a little, a little bootleg here get uh, Illingworth on the edge. Everybody's thinking that Lee's going to get it. They've run it four straight to that point. Illingworth, play action, sit down. And driven down by Lazarus Williams, number 10 in black, and that's a big-time sack at a critical moment. Exactly what they went to, trying to get the quarterback on the, the edge of the defense, but New Mexico State not having it. This keeps them... Keeps the leverage and then makes the tackle to kind of finish things off. Nice job by Williams there to identify his keys and, and then still make a play. Third down and goal and a timeout. Yeah, too many men ran off the field for New Mexico State. And they only had 10 New Mexico left. State has called their third and final timeout of the half. So they got to one, one more body on the field. And he, they, they, they exhausted their final timeout. But it's a good time to take it because they were outmanned. I mean, somebody was going to give up a play there. And Jerry Kill has been ballistic on the sideline throughout this second quarter. Yeah, it's because he's had to burn two timeouts. You see two guys, three come off the field, and you can count ten. Even my U of H math, I can count that fast. <laughs> now, Kill has been on a mission to turn this program around. It's what he's done at four other stops as a head coach along the way. Of course, the health problems, suffering from epilepsy, the seizures well documented during those stops. He's the eighth winning as active coach in, in the game right now. So uh, he knows how to do it. He can, he can put programs together. Just give him some time. He's going to have these guys competing as well. To a tower, the running back, third down and goal from the 10. Ellingworth sets up the screen. And no real estate available for Jamal Bell, driven backwards towards the 15. 
Chris Ojo, they call him Mojo Ojo. Nice job by Ojo. Got a chance to visit with him this week. And what a, a delight it was. You talk about a guy that is enthusiastic to play for this program. He told me he might actually think about, you know, staying in Las Cruces when his career is over, or maybe at some point getting back here. 29-yard field goal attempt coming from Brandon Talton. 21 of 29 a year ago from the right hash. He bangs that one through. Still a one possession game. Our new score 10 to 2. 408 remaining here in our first half in Las Cruces, New Mexico. Ten to two our score, 408 remaining in our first half here inside Aggie Memorial Stadium. Land of enchantment. Andre Wareroy, Phil Pot, Paul Carcatera along for the ride. Ken Wilson, a good start in year number one as the new head coach at Nevada. Good crowd on hand tonight as well, supporting the Aggies. He's trying to lock down that first win as a head coach. Not easy, right? Yeah, Jerry Kill over here with 150-plus, and Ken Wilson is just looking for number one. Yeah, we had to double-check that. Kill, the eight yeah. active, winning his all-time coach. It's amazing. It is impressive. Kill him back on. Boot this one away. And nine yards deep. Uneven start so far for New Mexico State quarterback Diego Pavia, Andre. Yeah, kind of self-inflicted when he's throwing it up into coverage. I know sometimes you want to let your receivers make a, make plays, but you can't against man coverage, and you're getting pressure. This one, the you know, receivers just got to catch the football, bail you out. That one I'll give to the, put on the receiver, but this one, another one, ill-advised oh. throw. Two interceptions in his last two throws, three over his last six passes. Got to settle him in while this game is still very much within reach. And you see he started eight for his first 12, just one for his last six, including the three picks. Pavi remains on the field. We do expect to see Gavin Frakes at some point tonight as well, the backup and the true freshman out of Norman, Oklahoma at the quarterback position. Jet sweep near side, a little shake and bake, but driven down and really nothing doing on that play is Justin Parker. Jordan Parker, excuse me, was stopped by Dead. Yeah, I gotta get him turned up the field. This is a play that's designed for as soon as you get leverage. And right, you know, there's a point there when he gets out flank or outflanks the defense where you gotta turn it up and take what's there. You're trying to, the guys will try to bounce it to get extra. Just can't do it. Live with what, what's there and come back and fight on second down. Deadman called the silent assassin for this Wolfpack defense. Doesn't say much. Obviously is productive. Javier rips it out. Old school option. Pitch goes to Brady. They're going to lose a couple of more. It was Tyson Williams that snipped it out. That's a loss of four. Yeah, and they're making them second guess. It's, it's, everything's moving so slow. And that's because you've got Nevada. A lot of guys are in position, so they're making Diego Pavia think about the option rather than attack with it. Amazing how this game changed shortly after the lightning delay. New Mexico State dominated most of that first quarter. No points to show for it. Struck with the safety on the errant snap that whipped right past Illingworth. Since then, it's been all Nevada after the long scoring drive in just four plays in less than 90 seconds. Yeah, it really has, and they turned it over to the offensive line. Clark mentioned it. Big five new guys playing up front for Nevada this year with Aaron Frost out, and they are moving bodies and controlling the line of scrimmage uh, offensively. And we got New Mexico State playing on their heels a little bit, but still, it's still within range. We've got a lot of football left. Wacky week zero beginning. We saw the upset over across the pond. Northwestern beating Nebraska that? earlier today. I think Fitzgerald can coach a little football. I think so. Absolutely he can. Pressure turned up on Scott Frost and Lincoln. Third down here, Pavia. Pocket collapses and down he goes. Dom Peterson, first time tonight we've called his name. The ball came out late and let's see. The ruling on the field is a fumble by the defense. Nevada ball, first up. Dom Peterson wore number 99 last year. He switched to numeral zero this campaign, and he is a force to be reckoned with. He is stretching out that zero as well. 
But here, just great pressure from Dom Peterson, and he, you called his name. He's about ready to make a play. Not only does he sack the quarterback, but he recovers the fumble to go along with it. A heck of a play by big Dom Peterson. He is the leader of this program on many, many levels. Well, he got an earful from Coach Wilson coming off the sideline, but Ken Wilson gave us this great quote on his star defensive tackle. He said he's as disrupted a defensive lineman as any player he's been around in his coaching career. Wolfpack take over in the red zone. And a handoff straight ahead results in a four-yard pickup. Toatawa getting it done once again. This rushing yeah. attack starting to take hold. He kind of starts the series, and then Lee comes in and finishes things. But Tawa has had some really, really impressive runs. He kind of got this thing started. When they were struggling offensive, offensively and not really knowing what to do, he came in, hit a couple of big runs, and then uh, they were find, found their way to the end zone. Another great story with 35 and White, his older brother is the running backs coach by Tower, the second leading rusher all time in Nevada history. You watch them interact with each other. They don't appear to be related. Very professional relationship on the field, but they are very tight, of course, off the field. Tower again picks up a couple of more, third down and short. Rob played, in, played at Nevada, as you mentioned, but also played in the NFL for a little while. He is, you see him before games, he can get he can get you fired up now. He's getting them fired up as we speak. Over 4,500 rush yards in Reno. Great story for a fifth-year senior that decided to stick around through the coaching change. Third and four. Clean pocket Illingworth all night to throw. Finally fires. Pass is caught by Castile. It'll be first down and goal. The Arizona transfer comes up flush. Well, they were down here their previous possession, first and goal, and New Mexico State able to hold them and keep them out of the end zone. So see if they can do it again here, force a field goal attempt. They need very much the same thing here. It was back with the reception. Illingworth plows ahead, upended. Ripped down at the five, a gain of maybe a half yard, and that's it. It's not too hard to get under or get leverage on a guy that's 6'6". Six, six. Here I just say, hey, protect yourself, get down. He's trying to run over a player. That doesn't happen a lot at 6'6". Six, six. I think Nevada, too, content to let the clock run down after the stop by Bryce Jackson. Try to close this first half with a bang. Lee in the backfield, he'll get the call. Monte Lee probing towards the end zone. And a penalty marker is down. Touchdown is ruled. Let's we'll see what the infraction's all about. The offsides. Offside. Yeah. Defense number 94 line up in the neutral zone. That penalty is declined. The result of the play is a touchdown. Marcus Buckley lined up in the neutral zone. The touchdown for Nevada. And the Wolfpack extending their lead with just 42 seconds remaining in the first half. And Devontae Lee awfully impressive with his second touchdown of the night. They keep turning it over, giving short fields away. And the game starts to slowly slip away from you. Good start, Ken Wilson. His first stint as a head coach, he's waited for his time. And Lee just finds a way. He just kind of probed his way to reach Pater. He's a good inside runner, between the tackles type runner, and then he explodes once he finds daylight. Not a lot of guys are signing up to meet him in the hole. And we mentioned that big lower body and this is a strong, strong runner at 230 pounds. Now we mentioned Ken Wilson, 19 years as an assistant in Reno, was the co-defensive coordinator at Oregon last year. He was actually following Mario Cristobal down to Miami, yeah. was looking for houses in Coral Gables when he got the phone call. 
hey, we've got a spot. Would you, you be interested? Job. Yeah. Would you be interested in this position at Nevada? His he wife, grew up in northern Nevada. His wife was excited to go back and he said, hey, I, I just kind of made my way. It was actually double dipping and, uh, and trying to help the team pre prepare for their bowl game in Oregon and then still uh, do some things at Nevada to get himself ready for that job, for this job. Wolfpack now scored 17 straight after trailing 2 0 early. And a touchback off the foot of Killam once again. You got to give Ken Wilson a lot of credit for double dipping. He's, he's trying to be the defensive coordinator for Oregon, preparing for the Alma Bowl, but then getting a staff together, recruiting. But he didn't want to cheat the players at. Oregon and that's a credit to him and his character because today's day and age we've seen coaches man they get jobs they're gone and the staff that they leave behind is is left with with what they have to deal with and, and he didn't want to do that and I think he's the type of of coach that players want to play for that's why when he came back after 19 years as an assistant there's a big time vibe around this program that they have one of their own coaching Jones the running back, Pavia remains on the field. Jones gets the carry, crossing the 30, a five-yard pickup, the tackle by Walker. And not only, you know, cheating coaches, but cheating players out of a bowl experience. You know, they've worked, in t you know, the entire year to get themselves ready. You get to a bowl game, and you want to feel like, you know, you can deliver and finish off what you started for that season, then move on to Nevada. I think he did a heck of a job in kind of serving both places. Mexico State out of timeouts, and Jerry Kill, your number one in Las Cruces, electing to allow the clock to run down. A well, good start for the Aggies, a better second quarter for Nevada. And the Wolfpack with a 17-2 halftime advantage on the road. Entertaining first two quarters in the books. Coming up after the break, it's the halftime report. Stay tuned. And welcome back to Las Cruces, New Mexico. Start of our second half inside Aggie Memorial Stadium. 17-2, Nevada leading New Mexico State on the road. Andre Ware, Roy Phil by Paul Carcaterra in the house. We take a look. Highlights from our first two quarters and four turnovers for the Aggies. One of the big stories. Yeah, it really has. Unfortunately, a couple of in you know, three interceptions. And a couple that have just been thrown up where Nevada players are coming down with them. And then a sack, fumble, turnover that led to another touchdown. All four turnovers have happened on the final 14 plays and led to the 17 points. Then it was the ground game for Nevada. Monte Lee with a couple of touchdowns. The turnovers were the story. And you see the total yards. New Mexico State, Andre, moved the football very well in its first three drives. No points to show for any of those possessions, all of which ended in Nevada territory. Give credit to the Wolfpack. First-year head coach Ken Wilson finding a way to just kind of hang around early. They weathered that storm literally after the lightning delay, and they came back a different team. Yeah, just, just got to take care of the football. That's been the story, just turnovers at inopportune times for New Mexico State and then Nevada capitalizing. At, uh, at a point where it led, like I mentioned, led to all 17 points in the first half. All came off turnover. So Ken Wilson, a great start, replacing Jay Norvell, who left Reno to go down to Colorado State. He was confident in our conversations this week, but uncertain because it is week zero, it is game one. You don't know what to expect with so many new players. Basically, 45 players left the, the program. He had to recruit. Going to transfer portal, all all things at his uh, fingertips to put a program together in his first year. And oh yeah, he was getting the team ready for the bowl a bowl game. All the while trying to to get himself set up. But he's got it running now, and he's got to be happy with his bunch for at least the first half of this one. The Wolfpack pick fourth West Division of the Mountain West Conference, the preseason poll. A strong finish last year with Carson Strong, who's now playing very well for the Philadelphia Eagles in preseason play. And Wolfpack set to get the football first to start our third quarter. Well, Nevada, they need to go down and just continue what they, they were doing at the end of the first half, which was 
the running game and putting the ball in the end zone. And then the Mexico State, they need a stop in the worst way. A stop, I mean, whether it comes by uh, a tur turnover or three and out, and then go down and put themselves in the end zone to get right back in this ball game. Ethan Albertson set to kick things away for New Mexico State. Well, Bell back deep to receive. Back the end zone. It'll be first and ten from the 25 for Nevada. Paul Carcaterra, what do you have? Well, Roy, expect a heavy dose of the run game in the second half. I just caught up with Ken Wilson, Nevada's head coach. He's really pleased with the run game. He said his new offensive line, that's five new starters, really found momentum specifically in that second quarter. Defensively, he thinks they've been at their best when they keep Diego Pavia on the pocket, right? Like if they let him get out of that pocket area he's dangerous he thinks because he's a smaller quarterback they can really rattle him if they keep him in the pocket well he's gotten picked off three times and he's also got sacked by Don Peterson and a fumble recovery so keeping the shorter quarterback in the pocket has been critical for them Tawa in motion the swing pass is there for 35 and wide and he dropped it when well, their playmaker Brohard was right there. Tower comes up with that. I don't know that he's going anywhere with Trevor Brohard right, right within his footsteps. I love a middle linebacker that wears number 80 in Brohard. You don't see that. I, just love, I love the name. It's a great football name. Second down and 10. Wolf pack by 15. Tawa, the fifth year senior. The wow. jump cut made a man miss, close to a first down, and stopped about a half yard short. Well, he's really got a feel for things tonight. Had the entire defense flowing to their left, and then he decides to put his foot in the ground and cut it back, and I mean, everybody was out of position when he made that run. Seven yards per carry tonight so far for 35 and white. Monte Lee checks in. Stacked up, only needed a yard. He'll get that and then some. Drive stays alive. Well, you usually see two different styles of running backs. When a, a team goes with a one-two punch or a running back by committee, it's usually a big, powerful back, and then a guy that comes in that gives you some, you know, some speed and quickness. Not with Nevada. These two guys are basically identical. And so that can wear on a defense over time. When you have two big physical backs coming downhill at you, over and over and over again. In the backfield on first down. Play action for Illingworth. A 7 of 11 through the air. Crossing the 40 ahead to the 42. Bryce Jackson ushered Jamal Bell out of bounds. But a quality pickup. Yeah, Derek Sage, the offensive coordinator for Nevada, he's called a heck of a game. You know, they can pound away all night with these two backs that we just described. But he is mixing in, doing a nice job of mixing in some passes there to Jamal Bell, who's seen Castile. Nice job of play calling. Monte Lee, deep handoff. And tucked down behind the line of scrimmage. TFL for Lazarus Williams. The coaching staff, they really like him. They think he's got an NFL future. Moved to, to linebacker this year from defensive end. And, the teams, he's the team's best pass rusher. He's got the size as well. 6'5", about 275. Looks the part. Ray could be another player for New Mexico State's defense that plays to the next level one day. No doubt. Coaches seem to think so. Bell in motion on third down and long. Ellingworth retreats. Pass incomplete. Blanket coverage there. Jamal Bell, the intended target. Dumas broke it up. Stitch. Stitch with a play what they call him around these parts. Second on the team with two interceptions last year. He's their best cover corner, and they pick up a first down, but then the next couple of downs, they force a punt, which will, uh, if they can go down and get some points here and reward this defensive effort, they'll be right back in this game. Lawrence Dixon back to receive this punt from Matt Freen. Uh, went to college with his dad. We were best of friends, and I've seen Lawrence when he first started Pop Warner football. I didn't realize you were that old. I've known him that long. <laughs> Dixon, corralled quickly and driven down. It's a 
a matter of fact, his dad used to do the same thing at Houston, ran back kickoffs, and then did it for the Dallas Cowboys and the Arizona Cardinals. So pretty good player in his own right. One yard return after a 39-yard punt. New line for New Mexico State. My question for you, Trey, how long do you stick with Diego Pavi at this point at quarterback? Yeah, I think you go this first drive, and if they have some success, you go ahead and stay with him. If he makes another knucklehead uh, decision by throwing it up into coverage, I think you got to make the change. And they told us Frank Frakes will play. Uh, we'll see here after this one. But he needs to – don't turn the ball over here. Turnovers have been a problem off deflections and also deep ball. Start Thomas the carry through the A-gap and a gain of two. You know, Gavin Franks has been warming up. I've seen Franks, the freshman, taking some – some action on the sideline. He's a big recruit. He's a Princeton commit. Jerry Kill and his staff were able to lure him after he committed to Princeton. But Pavia is on a short leash. Uh, Jerry Kill did say that they didn't help him out offensively, but he didn't make the best of decisions. And I asked Kill straight up, will we see Franks? And he said, we could. Second down and eight. Franks staying loose. That pass up in the air. And Picked off again. Well, that's, that's not off Fabio. That's the second interception off a receiver's hands that went up in the air and was intercepted. That Tyreek Mack with the pick. Mack with that one. The, the one before was Sanders. But you got to hold on to the football if you're a receiver for New Mexico State. Jordan Parker has to be better in that situation. The pass had some zest on it. Still have to corral it, Andre. Oh, what a heck of a play there to pick it off. And then now with another short field is Nevada. The Wolfpack set up to do business here at about the 30-yard line of the Aggies. Illingworth has gone the distance. Another turnover force. And let's see the Wolfpack want to take a yeah, shot. Right in the middle of the field. They're going to take a look at this interception, but the, the, that coverage, the middle of the field's a weakness, and that's where I'm going if I'm Nevada. Well, the secondary for the Wolfpack, awfully impressive. We'll take a look at that. Our replay official tonight, Brand Van Bark. Third down coming up for New Mexico State after the original ruling of the interception by Tyreek Mack was overturned by the replay booth and replay official Brad Van Bark Andre. I don't see it. I don't either. I, I don't see it, and I can watch that a thousand times, and I would still say it's an interception. You need indisputable video evidence. I'm not sure we saw that there with the arm and the hand under the football as he hit the ground. And he even had an official in the shot that we just witnessed. That was the best shot we had. I, don't, I still don't think it's an interception. Close call either way. Third down and eight. New line for Diego Pavia. Sorry, I think it's an interception. I don't think it's an incomplete pass. Pavia flush. Pass incomplete. Nevada will get the football back. Pass is incomplete. Cordell David, the intended receiver. Fourth down and seven. What do they say in basketball? Ball don't Ball lie. Don't lie. <laughs> Ball don't lie, man. Well, you trade off the bad field position after the call was overturned right. on the field. My point would be the original call matters there because you're looking for indisputable video evidence. I think that comes into question in that sequence. Totally if, agree with If you. they had called incomplete, then I think that that ruling should have stuck. Bentley Sanders back deep to receive this punt. Josh Carlson put things away for the Aggies. Able to do anything with the extra down, end over end. Sanders, bobbles, hit hard, driven down there. 45-yard punt, zero on the return. Now the big game coming up next weekend. Everybody's talking about it. You're going to be talking about it all week long, Notre Dame and Ohio State. Head coaching debut of one Marcus Freeman in Columbus. The Buckeyes led by the great C.J. Stroud, Andre Ware's favorite to win the Heisman this year. That means a little something, the explosive Buckeyes against that Notre Dame defense. Yeah, Notre Dame's got a lot coming back on the defensive side of the ball. Eight starters return, but they've got a lot to, uh, to, to do on the offensive side. I just think Ohio State's too powerful, got too many weapons. They're going to ring up the scoreboard. 
all season long and they're going to start it with Notre Dame. What a slate next weekend. Labor Day will be in East Lansing to see 15th ranked Michigan State on a Friday night spot. Can't wait to visit Mel Tucker. C.J. Stroud has the odds to win the Heisman. What better way to get off or catapult your way out in front of everybody than with a win over a good performance and a win over Notre Dame. Speaking of quarterbacks, Nate Cox checks in for the first time. The backup to Carson Strong the last two seasons. So they went from 6-6 to 6-9. First touch for Cross Patton, the transfer from Oregon, numeral zero. Plows ahead, short of the 35, a three-yard gain, the stop by Dumas. 6-9, six, six, Nate Cox. 60% well, last year, two touchdown passes, only one interceptions. Had a great camp. Made his first start in the quick lane a bowl game against Western Michigan. Solid quarterback in FBS history, my he, friend. He is. And he just handed the football off to 5-6 Cross Patton. Don't we'll see a lot of 6-9 guys playing quarterback or football, period. They usually power New Mexico forwards State for is charged, some basketball first charge, time out of the half. Aggies call timeout. the timeout. We'll step aside. Nevada by 15, just underway in our third quarter. Our Sunday night baseball matchup heads your way. Hey, later today on the East Coast, Braves and the Mets. Chasing the Mets, rather, in the NL East. The Cards lead the NL Central. Let's wrap it up at Bush Stadium, 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific on ESPN. Coverage begins at 6 Eastern with baseball tonight. Sunday night countdown. The Braves have been red hot. Cards making a playoff push. It's what we do at the end of August. Both teams continue to surge. Third down coming up for Nate Cox, the senior. He's waited for his time. Finally has arrived here in our third quarter. Pack needs four to keep the drive going. He'll keep it. Cox with a lane. Cox with a first down. Stopped at the 48. And that'll be a gain of 14 yards on the quarterback keeper for 6-9. If he just falls forward, how many yards is that? I mean, like at three six and a half. Nine. So you give him a little momentum and, and he falls forward, you know he's going to pick up the first down. That's pretty, uh, pretty good athletic ability I there. I think so. So Cox, a good start. Coming in for the lead. Shane Illingworth, the transfer from Oklahoma State. Bryce Jackson, the stop against Toa Tawa. And now Tawa has Nevada in plus territory. Tawa runs so hard. And I think you get, there's a misconception about his quickness and ability to change directions. Five yard game, play action Cox, heaves it first down. One thing with Nate Cox, he's not gonna have problems seeing over the line of scrimmage. At 6'9", I mean, he can see everything. Spencer Curtis makes his first catch of the season, 18 and white. Approaching 10 to go in our third quarter. At 6'9", you should be able to see over the top of the stadium. No doubt. Cox couldn't handle the snap. Second time we've seen a potential issue there tonight with Nevada's offense. Running the run and shoot, never took a gun snap my entire college career. Still banging that drum, I hear you. I can't, I can't, I, I like watching coverage, I like being, and when you're moving, you can see coverage, and the snap is coming in the same place every single time. It's a loss of eight. I don't know that it gives you that much more time and protection, being in the shotgun either. Getting philosophical here, late nights in Las Cruces. Well, that's all fans see nowadays. Right. That's all they see is a shotgun. 75% of the plays that, I guess, take place in the NFL are out of the shotgun. So you rarely see, and on the collegiate level, every offense with pace and tempo, it's usually done out of the shotgun. Even short yardage, teams will go to the shotgun just to hand the ball off, which is beyond me. I've never understood that one. And that really is what gets fans up in arms when there's an issue there, short yardage near the goal line yes. either direction. There's a turnover out of the gun because of a bad snap. Everybody goes crazy. On third down, penalty marker is down. Screen passes there. And no real estate to be gained. Tackled a yard behind the line by Bryce Jackson. He's had a nice game. One of the leaders on this, this back end for New Mexico State. 
has tons of experience. The Aggies are hanging around that grab by Toa Tawa in traffic. Illegal formation, offense, five players in the backfield. That penalty is declined, fourth down. Well, I know that Nevada's put up 17 points. All the points have come off turnovers, and two of them on a short field. Defense is kind of doing its job for New Mexico State. The offense now, as we start to get later into this game, got to start doing their part. My question for you, the Heisman Trophy winning quarterback, is this the possession where Gavin Frakes checks in for the first time? I think time? so, because you had an interception essentially overturned. Uh, not the quarterback's fault, but you got to see if you can get some life into your offense and see if someone else can add a spark to it. Flag on the field, the punt received by Dixon at the nine. Illegal formation in the backfield. That fight. Will force at the end of the kick. Timeout. 8 09 remaining in our third quarter. New Mexico State gets the football back when we return, and guess who's on the field for the first time? Gavin Frakes after this. 17 2 our score. Nevada leading New Mexico State. Andre Ware, Paul Carcaterra, Roy Philpott here in Las Cruces, New Mexico on site. And enjoying this one, Gavin Frakes getting set to make his debut into the FBS, a one-time commitment to Princeton. As Paul Carcaterra told you about in the first half, switched that commitment. His dad played here for the Aggies. Jerry Kill said, hey, we'll take that, use that to our advantage anytime in recruiting. Z might have to stick with his original commitment, <laughs> which would put it in Princeton. Now you know the intelligence is there, handoff. Yes. Monty Jones barrels ahead for a short pickup, a stop by Drew Watts. Well, this is the perfect time, I think, to uh, to put Frakes in the game, where you still have a bunch of time in the third quarter. Give him a drive. Let's see if he adds a spark to what they do offensively. Can he get us on the scoreboard? And if he does, then you kind of continue to ride that. If not, and he gets the jitters, or you see that the moment is too big for him, you can always go back to Diego, who started this game. Javi got off to a great start he here for his first 12 and then just lost momentum. Off the pump fake, wide open. Here's a chance for the Aggies. Pass will be caught just as Powers. Still on his feet, Powers lasso down in the red zone. You called it, my man. You said during the break, I got to give you credit, something big. I feel something big getting ready to happen. And I just said, a shot maybe? Maybe so, in the form of Frakes. Spins one out here, a little shoulder pump to get his receiver down the field. Powers. And power, with the Justice grab. Powers with the grab. Just needed a receiver that could catch the ball and not put it on the turf or have it ping off his hands and into the, the hands of a Nevada defensive back. And now threatening is New Mexico State. 67 yard gain for the Aggies, longest play of the night. Side handoff, fake toss after the fact to Jones. And a good pickup, and you can feel the Aggies now with momentum on this side for the first time in a while. Yeah, and it, it, uh, and it comes. That's what we were talking about, uh, just, a, just a spark. is all they were looking for offensively. Now, can you get us into the end zone? You'd, be a, you'd go a long way by doing that and keeping this job for the remainder of the year. Offensive coordinator Tim Beck told us they saw Frakes at camp at TCU. They loved him. They had him on campus. He enrolled early. He's been here since January. Freshman out of Norman, Oklahoma, directing traffic quite nicely so far. Jones again. Peterson chasing, tripped up at the 10. Frakes had a great senior year at Norman North High School. Close to 3,000 all-purpose yards, 32 touchdowns as a senior. What a whole lot of running room there for Jamani Jones, who's a junior college transfer from NEO. Back with the last tackle, an important stop to make it third down and three. First order of business right here for Frakes. Pick up the first down. 
score down territory in your opinion? Oh, I think so. Definitely it with the score being 17-2. Eight in the box, Frakes to the air, to the end zone, pass is caught! Touchdown Aggies! Cordell David with the grab in the corner. Sometimes you don't know what you have in practice because some guys just aren't practice players. I wasn't. But when the lights come on, let's go get it. That's Gavin Frakes right now. Through a straight up dime in the corner of the end zone the ball spinning nicely to the outside behind the defender's ear and what a catch by Cordell David he got two feet down you only need one in college number 11 in black celebrating and rightfully so in breaks two for two through the air in his first drive for 77 yards and the six are right well, there. Las Cruces you got a quarterback conversation right now Albertson on for the all-important Won't, all won't call it after. a controversy, but I'll call it a conversation for sure. Now another one of those, you got a full-blown comp uh, competition going on. Let's take another look at this pass to David in the corner of the end zone. Just to call this a fade stop where you throw it right behind the defender's ear and let your receiver adjust to it. And it's got to be thrown on a frozen rope. This is repped over and over and over in practice. And the defender has no chance because you don't know when the ball is arriving to make a play on it. And it is timed up perfectly, thrown perfectly. That's a heck of a way to throw your first collegiate touchdown pass. See Tony Sanchez, wide receivers coach, dapping it up a little bit with Cordell David. Sanchez, the longtime UNLV head man and a former player here for New Mexico State. Another earful coming from Jerry Kill. I'll tell you what, he's been after his staff and these officials at times tonight. He told us he had settled a little bit and he's a little more mild, man, a CEO type. I'm just going to manage things. No, he's coaching tonight. And now he's trying to coach his team right back into this thing. They're back in it. First time roaming the sidelines as the head coach since 2015. Last stop at Minnesota. Guess who New Mexico State plays Thursday night? Yeah, the Golden Gophers on the road. Three yards deep and tripped up is Bell. So we check in again with Paul Carcatero. You know, I was watching Frakes warm up, and I had a strong idea he was going to get in that series. And I'll tell you what, you guys were talking about his intelligence being a Princeton commit. We could talk about his physical attributes too. Jerry Kill and staff told us all week that in terms of like the measurables, he sizes up to NFL combine prospect type quarterbacks. And when you watch him warm up, when you watch his first drive, I mean, Andre, that, that's something of legend, right? Your, your first time ever playing college football, you're two for two with a bomb and then a beautiful touch pass. Gavin Frakes has some upside. Yeah, and your team's struggling before you go in and you deliver like that, throw your first collegiate touchdown pass. You'll remember it forever. Cox back on the field, heaves one deep and out of bounds. Second down and 10. All right, if you're Nate Dryling, the young defensive coordinator for the Aggies, you're trying to dial up some pressure here and mix things up. I keep, I keep doing exactly what he's done all night long, especially with a new quarterback. I'm not sure why Cox is in the game right now because uh, Illingworth was playing his, his butt off at, at times during this game. But if that's what they're going to do, I wouldn't change anything that they're doing defensively. They've done their job. Now the offense has started to do it in their job. So Atala, bowling ball straight ahead. Stopped at the 29. It'll be third down and long. Which is what you want defensively. So now if you want to change things up, get exotic, bring some blitz, show some pressure. Make sure you defend the run here. But I, I think Nevada's going to throw the football, and I would come after the 6'9", Nate Cox. Lee, the running back, third and seven. Cox steps ahead. Cox with a rush lane. Cox with a first down. Well, those long strides can be deceiving. Yeah, forced out of the pocket by pressure. Unfortunately for New Mexico State, there's nobody on the front side that got there. They drop in the coverage. He steps up in the pocket, and there's a lot of green turf in front of Nate Cox.
Cox has waited for his time to shine behind Carson Strong. Strong, the Mountain West Conference Offensive Player of the Year the last two seasons. Slide in safely at the 40. The ball <laughs> spotted right where the slide begins. It takes the big fella a while to get it going, doesn't he? Those long six nine legs. But once he gets going, well, he is he's pretty athletic. Not afraid to run him, and that's a message being sent by Derek Sayetay. We will run the quarterback. Cross Patton checks in as the running back, 5'6", a buck 55. That's what you're saying. 6'9", headed off the 5'6". That's Minute and Muggsy back in the day. <laughs> that's what he'll do here, Patton. Change of pace, third down running back, driven backwards after a game of four by Chris Ojo. And Ojo escorts him to the ground. A little ugly on that one. Showing him who's boss. Don't come in the middle of this defense. I own this here. Me and Trevor Brohar. We own this area of the field. Mojo Ojo, born in Nigeria, moved to Los Angeles when he was eight. And a big time playmaker for the Aggies defense. Tala gets the call on third down. Tala picks up a first. We're starting to take over. You see as we get later into this game, this big offensive line for Nevada starting to lean and inflict its will up front. And Toa Tawa with great vision is finding holes on the backside. Needed four, picked up five, now at 83 yards on the ground. And this time Cox lasso by Lazarus Williams. Not sure if he was offsides or not. May have been a little bit early. Check the infraction. He is a good looking athlete, you know it? 6'5", 270. Defense, number 10. Penalty, first down. Got there a little quick before the ball was snapped. And a free five yards. So now I'm across midfield. I'm Derek Sage. I'm going to dial up a deep shot. You're licking your chops right to, now. To Bell. I mean, it's a free down. That's a free five yards you just gave me. It's still first down. I'm going to take my shot right here. He back in at running back. We'll get the call. Stacked up after a one-yard pickup by Ojo. Not rotating a lot of defensive players in and out. And then the union starting to lean on defenders a little bit. Getting to the second level and allowing these backs, Lee and Tower, to, to take over here. One possession game, second down, and a long four to go. Cox wants to throw. He will, has his tight end. That's another first down. And that's the mix that we talked about. That's the offensive coordinator, Derek Sage, has done just enough passes to kind of keep you guessing defensively. Jacob Munro with the ground. Nate Cox now four of five through the air, just 13 yards to show for him. Far side is Lee. Boy, jumped in the air for no reason, expecting to hurdle the Mexico State defender. Picks up a first down in the process. I, I just like the block by Nate Cox. Anytime I get a quarterback that throws a block that frees up someone, I, I, gotta, I gotta point to that. Big fella goes out and he looks up. One of the defenders, just enough for Devontae Lee to get the edge. A little hop, skip, and a jump out of bounds right there. Not sure what all that was about. Gain of 15. Four first downs on this possession for Nevada on the move once again. Play action for Cox. Swing pass incomplete. Now Bell was open for a moment. The pass was errant and sailed out of bounds. Yeah, he may have saw a stitch. Cyrus Dumas coming from inside out. Be careful. Yeah. We didn't get that nickname for nothing. Not afraid to put. See that helmet? That helmet's got a lot of marks. He's put that helmet on a lot of a lot of guys on his team. This is the first different uniform he's seen for in quite some time. Transfer out of Independence Community College in Kansas. The third down and about five. Tawa picks up a couple. And a big play coming up now for Nevada. A big third down play here. They went to Tawa on the last third down. Let's see if they go back there again. Maybe thinking half of it or most of it here. 
with a run and then go for it on fourth down. Back already with two third down conversions on this drive. Tala straight ahead. Stop short of the line to gain. It'll be fourth down and two on what should be the they're, final play of the third. There's no doubt they're going for it. They, when you run the football in that circumstance, you've already made up your mind on fourth down you're going for it. An injured player. Jacob Nunez. He's just started to gain health for head coach Ken Wilson in preseason camp. Yeah, he had four starts last year. We talked about everybody being new up front, but he did start four games a year ago. At left guard, one at left guard, and then the rest, I think, at right. Three at left guard and one at right guard. Looks like it may be in that shoulder area. To nine seconds. They're checking down around the ankle, knee area. Watch 68. He may have gotten rolled up on. Yep. Tower rolls right up on his left, left leg. Nine seconds remaining in the third. It'll be fourth down and a short three for the Wolfpack. The field goal makes it a two possession game. Keep the drive going, obviously a chance to create some further separation. Trailing by eight, still a touchdown and a two point conversion could tie it up potentially for the Aggies. So a big yeah. play either way. That's why I think uh, Ken Wilson's looking for the big plays, excuse me, the big points here, rather than just settling for a field goal. It's been a fun game tonight. Certainly we hope Nunez is going to be okay. And with the timeout being called, we'll step aside as the cart comes out on the field. Don't forget, coming up next Saturday, number 11, Oregon, third-ranked Georgia from Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta. What a scene it will be in that top 12 matchup. Pac-12 and SEC later that night, 7.30 Eastern, fifth-ranked Notre Dame. Number two, Ohio State, live from the Horseshoe in Columbus. The Saturday night football game presented by Capital One. Both games also on the ESPN app. Heisman candidates on display, front and center. Next weekend, Bryce Young, C.J. Stroud. How about Caleb Williams now at SC? Will Anderson may be the best player in college football needs his respect this season a little bit more than what we've heard in the past. Yeah, I, I was, I thought Will Anderson should have been in uh, in New York last year, but uh, it wasn't, maybe he's, he's kind of holding that chip or keeping that chip out there and it'll motivate him for this year. It's a good group. Jacob Nunez being carted off the field with that lower left leg. <laughs> position so that it cannot move and certainly our best for Jacob. Nevada does not have to run a play to close down the third quarter and it will not. Fourth down quarter. Less than three to go to start the fourth. Biggest play of the night headed your way after this timeout. One possession affair in Las Cruces. Come back with us. Fifteen minutes to go back in Las Cruces, 17 to 9, Nevada leading New Mexico State. Smart call here. Put, a, put more points on the board. Brandon Talton from 35 yards out on the right hash. Kick on the way. And Talton makes it a two-score game. You gotta make sure your kicker delivers. Because the thought before the quarter expired was going for it on fourth down. Gives you a little more time to think about it between quarters, and then Ken Wilson decided or elected to go ahead and put the, the points on the board and make it a 20 to 9 game. 13 play, 57 yard scoring drive. And Wilson told us this week he had as much confidence in Talton as any kicker he's ever been around. And a critical conversion there for the Wolfpack. Well, coming up Sunday night, the only game in town in terms of college football. Florida State and LSU down in New Orleans at Caesars Superdome. 
Ryan Kelly makes his head coaching debut for the Bayou Bengals. Mike Norvell, year number three, off and running after a 40 against Duquesne earlier today after a weather delay. Three different Florida State ground gainers rush for over 100 yards in that one. All of that will be tested against the SEC. That's a huge LSU game Tigers. for both both schools. Yeah. I think both of them have a tremendous amount of pressure to win the opening game of the season. LSU's got some talent coming back. That's going to be a tough one. Kill him. Sends it end over end. Three yards deep and a touchback. Another chance to inspect Gavin Brakes and what he's done tonight. Yeah, he was special in that first drive. That's for sure. A little pump fake going up top to hit Justice Powers. And then capping it off with a touchdown pass to Cordell David in the corner of the end zone. 85-yard touchdown drive. Only had 120 yards on eight drives before that one. That's what I would deem to be a spark. That's the spark they were looking for, that's for sure. Good start for Pavia before he cooled off. The interceptions hurt. Frakes with plenty of time on the clock here, just underway in our fourth quarter, trailing by 11. Jones the running back, Frakes. Over to Cordell David, and a touchdown reception in the third quarter. Well, you see guys when they warm up, or in the pregame warm up, watching him, he could spin it. Most guys can because the adrenaline's there. You get in the game, it kind of tails off a little bit. That ball's still coming off his hands like it was in warm up. Pretty live arm for Gavin Frakes. Nine yard gain on first down. Jones in it running back. David has been active, targeted eight times tonight. He's grabbed four receptions so far, including that last one. Frakes try to run it. He's a dual threat signal caller as well. To the edge, driven down. Right at the line, the game will check the penalty flag. That just they may be holding here, and it's going to make it a more difficult situation for Gavin Frakes in order to, uh, to convert here. It's going to be a second and about 11 or so. Your ability to pick out the holding penalty. Offense, number Elite. 78, 10 yard penalty, second down. You just kind of see it as it's happening, and I don't know. You've been involved in a couple of those instances over the a course of the game or two career. here and there. Right. It's Gabe Preciato. And now it makes it tough. It's because you, you know, first down, essentially, you went for a loss of one, as opposed to the nine yard gain on the completion. University for Frakes for the first time. And coaching debuts, Ken Wilson, Jerry Kill. Nevada, New Mexico State tonight. The final games of week zero. All eyes turning towards week one in those colossal matchups. Labor Day weekend, Justice Powers makes his second grab. Boy, what a throw. And you say, oh, it's a simple hitch route, but it's coming from the far hash mark all the way across the field. When you can make a throw like that, that's the, you're sending a message to everybody on your schedule that you can't just play a certain coverage based on the hash mark when you play New Mexico State because this kid can make every single throw, and it doesn't matter where it's coming from. Seven-yard gain, third down and three. Frakes has been perfect so far, four for four for 93 yards and a touchdown. Pressure, Frakes, try to buy some time, gets to the edge, Frakes with a pass, and a first down. Boy, not only has he been pinpoint accurate with the football through the air, but that's a pretty athletic play to outflank the defense when a guy has an angle on you and then outrun him to the first down marker. You've got enough speed, so he's 6'4", 220, and moving around like he's about the size of Diego Pavia. That will keep you on the field for a long time. Naki Matialona applying the pressure, unable to corral Frakes. Five yards deep, he needed three, gained seven. Going straight ahead, crossing the 40, ahead to the 42, a four-yard pickup. 
Kind of reminds me of a guy that used to play in West Texas, out in Lubbock, Texas Tech. Had red hair, could sling it around. Billy Joe Tolliver. Okay. Could sling that baby. He's with the Chargers for a couple of yeah, years after that. Yes, sir. So what Frakes kind of reminds me of with that red hair and looking through that face mask. One time Princeton commitment. He's been here since January. Play action. Fires a strike. It is dropped by Jacinto. Well, dry, it's driving me crazy. I know it's uh, going to drive Coach Keel crazy when he watches this film and just the drops, the amount of drops in this game. Two of them led to interceptions, which turned into points. It's a simple out route, which you catch every single day in practice. You've got to catch it at this point in the game. First incompletion for Frakes. It should have been grabbed by numeral zero in black. Third down and six as a result. A heck of a throw on the outside. And the arm streak for Frakes has I been might, impressive. I, I might have met him coming back to the huddle or escorted him to the sideline. Frakes with time. Deep ball, not there. Penalty marker comes in late. David, the intended receiver. Deadman was in coverage. We're going to have a little holding. In the secondary, a guy working against Brady, the, the freshman. Zeke Robbins, I think. Holding defense, number 13. Automatic first down. That's Brady. He's the middle slot receiver in this, in this route. And you're going to get Robbins that just kind of grabs him. He sees the pump fake, knows he's beaten, and just grabs. Now the ball went to David. Really, Robbins didn't need to commit that penalty, and it's a costly one. Instead of fourth down, it's now a first down in plus territory. A coachable moment in the film room early next week. Jones with a stiff arm. Jones! Tripped up in Nevada territory. Pick them up, to Mexico Mexico State. You Got to pick those feet up a little bit. Coming through the hole, you got to pick them up. Otherwise, you get tripped up. It was a heck of a move to kind of slip under the defensive end of the side where he, he was running with a football, but someone else just kind of swipes his feet. Still a pretty good gain of, of about six. Jones now 11 touches, Dre, with 28 yards total. Two and a half for carry up to this point. Mexico State still with plenty of time. All three timeouts. So the two timeouts remain. Breaks by some time. Was that pass caught? Need to say he slid out of bounds. It is incomplete initially. And let's see. Penalty marker is down on the near side as well. A heck of a throw and a, just a play to get rid of the ball. We are watching a guy grow up right before our eyes. Great effort by Warner. Well, he's been in the game a full quarter yet. Running on the field is an incomplete pass. Ineligible receiver downfield. Offense number 78. Five yard penalty. Third down. The second Theodore. penalty on this drive by the left tackle, Preciado. Yeah, Preciado is he's not going to want to hear the, the comments from Coach Keel when they watch the film tomorrow. Holding penalty, and then now you're getting down the field a little bit early, but maybe there was a screen of some sort being set up, and, and once the quarterback leaves the pie, you don't know where he's going. So you think, oh, I can go ahead, the timing of the play tells him to go ahead and release and get down the field. Second down and nine. Ball is pushed back. The 47. Set up the screen appropriately this time. Star Thomas dances his way ahead for a gain of two. Maurice Wilner help bring him down. Christopher Love as well getting in on some of the action. Big down here for New Mexico State, and I got to believe it's four down territory for. Coach Kill. A lot of time left, but hard to disagree with that assessment. 
Backup quarterback providing a spark here in our fourth quarter. Aggies trying to rally at home. Play action for Frakes. Again, deep ball, flag on the field, and the pass is picked off. Way back near the seven-yard line, intercepted by Nevada. Bentley Sanders once again. Got a, got a flag on the play. That would be Sanders, his second interception play in center field. Looks like it's going to be against Nevada, though. Holding defense number zero. Ten yard penalty from spot. First down. Dom Peterson got called for holding. Maybe a stunt going on inside. You're trying to hold a lineman to get a linebacker free on the quarterback. It's the second pick that's been taken away to one due to a penalty, the other due to instant replay. Clock winding. Yeah, that's how you get defensive holding. A lot of fans wonder, how does a de how you get defensive holding? Yeah. Well, it's a lineman holding an offensive lineman and allowing a linebacker to blitz through. That's crafty. Until you get caught. Star Thomas barrels his way ahead to the 30. And a tough four and a half yards there for number four. Say it's not speeding until you get pulled over, right? You go as fast as you want to. Easy. Until you get pulled over. Easy. Nice job of running there by, by Star Thomas, one of their bigger backs at 225 pounds. And starting to just get this running game going just enough to keep the front seven of Nevada honest along the line of scrimmage. Aggies now with 75 rushing yards. And to make coverage, top of your screen instead of handoff to Thomas. Racing across the 30 and a gain of one, close to two. It'll be third and short. In a few more weeks when they get fully confident in Gavin Frakes, that's going to be a situation where a lot of guys in the box, you got the one-on-one -on -one coverage, man coverage you talked about on the outside where he can check out of that, the, the run play, and get to the single receiver where he's got got what you want. Is that a situation where Frakes did not notice that that's what he had? He's got to start seeing the field, but I, I would imagine he's call, he's running what's called right now, being his first cup collegiate game. Tenth play, the drive coming up for the Aggies. Third down and three. Frakes, seam. Dropped again and incomplete. What anticipation. You, this is, this is a throw by a junior quarterback or a senior that's been in a program a long time. Just the fact of sticking it in there, you got the confidence to know the hole is there inside. Nobody behind the receiver. All he's got to do is hang on and it's six points. Freshman to freshman, Brady dropped it, having to reach behind him during the routes. 46 yard field goal coming now for Ethan Albertson. This would make it a one possession game again. This one from the left hash. Plenty of distance on the way and that kick is good. Here comes New Mexico State. 20 to 12, plenty of time remaining here in our fourth quarter. College football is back in we're heating up in Las Cruces, and two of the four female equipment managers in the FBS are actually in this game. Nevada's Shannon O'Hare and New Mexico State's Paulina Mahelich. I spoke to both of them, and they are wonderful. And before the game, they spent some time together sharing some stories, and both worked their way up the ranks extremely hard to get the respect and the opportunities. And Shannon told me she draws inspiration from women announcers, refs, and other women in the game. And there's a place in the sport of football, not only for men, but women. So props to these two who are trailblazers and doing amazing work. That's awesome, Clark. Awesome. Awesome story. Two yards deep in the end zone. Tripped up crossing the 20. Nevada will take over there as a father with two daughters. As a human being, I could not agree with that statement. I like the gloves Shannon was wearing. Yeah. How about that?
Bell brings it back to the 20. Nate Cox takes over there. So we saw Shane Ellingworth get the start. Cox has come on in relief. A little problems trying to retrieve the tee off the field. We got it taken care of. But college football is back. It is yeah. great. The stories ready to be told in 2022. Big weekend coming up next weekend, of course. Cox. Straight ahead. So 25. When he falls forward, it's an automatic five yards. It's a big deal. You got to get to him during the play fake before he gets a full head of steam going uh, north and south. And the batter really hasn't tested New Mexico State deep yet between Ellingworth and Cox. 11 completions to well, 64 total yards. That would be Jamal Bell because he's got all the all the speed you need to get behind coverage. The fastest wide receiver on the roster, Cox. Delivers in the flats at the line to gain to Tawa. How about that? Showing you all kind of physical gifts as Tawa. Running through people around him and then making a nice grab, going climbing the ladder to make one. And you think about 35 and wide, Devontae Lee. You know, playing for Jay Norvell in the air raid system the last couple of years. Yeah. Toa said it many times this offseason. He's ready to be unleashed in this new maybe ground-oriented attack we're going to see with Derek Sage calling plays. Ken Wilson as the head coach. I think we've seen that at times so far tonight. Leon Q on first down. He's going to lose a couple here. Well, it's, it's a tribute to Ken Wilson and his ability to see the strengths of the offense. He knows, he knows that he had two talented backs returning, that he's going to build the offense, at least this first year, around those two backs. And uh, it served him well tonight. Uh, Derek Sage was in the room with Chris Hawk, legendary Nevada coach who's at practice in many of the games, of course, in Reno. Coach Hawk announced that they were going to start running the pistol back in the day. So he's had the proper influences in terms of offensive football. That pass is low. Trying to spot Castile. It's quickly third down. Well, what it does is it stops the clock for New Mexico State. Brings up third down and long. Got to get themselves off the field here. The job for Nevada right now is to try to convert, but don't take a big, big risk in doing so because you're going to give New Mexico State, if you turn it over, you give them a short field here. Last time they chose to run Nate Cox. Conservative call. Tawa makes a man miss and picks up a first down. Well, he gets a full head of steam. Forget about it. He can make guys miss, but he's just as special of seeing a crease and taking what the run or the block has given him. Out of the pistol, which we just discussed. Tawa on third and 11 picks up 12 Get some of the pistol in there. Like it. Tip of the cap to the pass at Nevada. Boy, he threw a move on that last run Tawa did on Dylan Early that everybody in the New Mexico State film room is going to be talking about tomorrow. Wolfpack have now rushed for 170 yards after that four-yard gain by Tawa. He'll be talking about it in Reno as well. Question, no question on about the, it. In the running back room. Cox will keep it. He'll fall forward again, pushing towards midfield. Wolfpack ran the ball just 37% of the time last year, one of the lowest marks in the country. We're seeing that start to change tonight. Physical was the the buzzword, I think, during preseason camp up in Reno. They've showed that with the Union and, of course, with Lee and Tawa back here. Well, when you want to get a brand-new offensive line incorporated into a game, let them fire off for a while. They're going to have some fun this year, the five guys up front blocking for for Tawa and Lee. 40 running plays so far tonight, just 20 passing plays for the pack on third and short. Less than a yard needed, stacked up at the line, the second effort, and I think he may have got there. Lee got there, he found a way to pick up the line to gain and then some. Well, I thought he was stopped, and then Coach Kill seems to think the same thing, but the line judge is going to move the ball, and it's going to be a first down for for Nevada. Well, Dylan Early had a chance early. Yeah, they had him stacked up, and then he just kept turning his legs. Thought they heard a whistle, but they didn't, and it's going to be first down here for the Wolfpack. 
That was actually Dylan Devonte Lee that converted for uh, for Nevada. Pack now with four third down conversions on their last two drives. Now in plus territory. Less than four and a half to go. Straight ahead. No gain on that one. Right. New Mexico State needing the football. Right now, you see the rushing yards, 177 to just 77. Aggies do have two timeouts to work with here. Tawa lost a yard on that rush. And the pack content to let this clock run down, still 24 and counting on the play clock, Greg. Well, kind of lopsided in play calls where you have the luxury of two talented backs. Nine plays, seven of them have been runs, only two passes thrown on this drive. Empty backfield, you wonder if Cox is going to take off again. No, this time back to the air. Has a man, pass caught, short of the line to gain. Stopped by Schoolart. The reception made by Jamal Bell. Hey, Cox has settled in nicely, hadn't he? Standing tall in the pocket, delivering the football, and it's not, it's not an easy thing to do when, you ha when they know you're going to throw, and you still throw it, but uh, he's still able to complete it. Third down and five, it feels like they're going to run it here. Lee in the backfield, Cox in the pistol once again. Under three minutes to go. And they will run it. Lee to the edge. Lee, penalty marker is down, ushered out of bounds, and let's check the infraction. Could it be a face mask? Yeah, it's going to be a face mask. Somebody brushed the face mask of, of Devontae Lee. This will be a, an automatic first down here for Nevada. What a big call this is. Donovan King grabbed the face mask. Personal foul, face mask, defense number 16, 15 yard penalty added to the end of the run, automatic first down. Enormous. Huge. Huge because you need the football and you don't need to give up yardage for first downs and and it's coming on, on the part of penalties. Would have been fourth down and three instead. Face mask penalty. And you're in field goal range. Yeah, puts you in scoring position here. Two and a half minutes to go. And the coach Wilson tell us Talton has hit in practice 61-62, so they're well within his range. Was it picked off? Yes, it was. The initial ruling, an interception by the Aggies. And let's see if they overturn it, and I believe they will on the field. Bryce Jackson off the carom. Ruling on the field, complete pass. Every play in college football is reviewed, and this is one where you're going to certainly take want to take a look at this if you're the replay booth. So close. So close. Well, that's that looks like a pick. It's a, at first watch, it looks like he got his both hands under it. Carlton Brown couldn't make the reception. Jackson thinks he's got a pick. And it does not make it to replay review. Or did they stop it now after the play? They just got in. And stopped it. Or they thought Coach Kills taking the time out to give replay a chance to to look at it a little longer. One possession game, two sixteen to go in Las Cruces. Twenty to twelve, our score. Let's clean up that last sequence back in Las Cruces. Andre Ware, Roy, Bill Pot, Paul Carcantier. Jerry Kill wanted to call a timeout to give the replay booth a little extra time to review what could have been an interception by Bryce Jackson. Instead, Nevada runs a play quickly. Tawa picks up three yards. It's third down and seven. No review of the potential Jackson pick yeah. on a bang-bang play against the turf. I thought they would at least take some time to look at that 
last non-interception, but here we go. Jet sweep to Castile. Into the boundary and shoved out of bounds. And now fourth down coming up for the pack. And decision time for Ken Wilson. You got to think the field goal is in order here, right? No, I would think so, definitely. Makes it 23 to 12, and time is not on the side of the Aggies right now. Would look like Castile caromed out of bounds to stop the clock instead. That, that would have helped to wind down. No doubt about it. So here comes Brandon Talton. Connected from 35 moments ago. This attempt from 38. From the right hash to make it a two possession game. Kick on the way and Talton comes up true once again. Boy, when you have a good kicker, a lot of good things happen during the course of a season. Right down the middle was Brandon Talton with that one. One thirty-five left here in Las Cruces, New Mexico State with a handful of self-inflicted wounds by way of drops. All game long, we, this has been the story for this offense. Screen passes, easy passes over the middle, just in receivers' hands, two that have led directly to interceptions where they're pinging off receivers and into the hands of defenders for Nevada. Got to clean things up going forward. Now approaching almost 2 o'clock in the morning Eastern time back in Las Cruces. 23 to 12, our score. That's going to be a heavy, heavy conversation tomorrow around here by from coaches to players catching the football. Wide receivers coach Tony Sanchez, a former New Mexico State player back in the day, former UNLV head coach as well. Certainly will be talking things over with his units. Aggies get it back when we return to Las Cruces after this. Don't forget, coming up Labor Day night, the second of the Chick-fil-A kickoff games in Atlanta. Davo Sweeney, number four, Clemson, taking on Georgia Tech at 8 Eastern on ESPN, also on the app. Coverage begins at 7 Eastern. College football countdown. Back in Las Cruces, New Mexico, late night action. At Aggie Memorial State. It's been a fun game, a good game. A yeah. big weather delay back in our first quarter. Outside of that, Nevada has responded. And currently with this 11 point advantage. Andre Ware, Roy Philpott, Paul Carpentera. Quarterback controversies perhaps for both teams this coming week. We'll have to wait and see about that. I think Nate Cox may Full slide start. back into his role Offense, as starter at Nevada. And then Five yard I think we got team. a new sheriff in first town down. and a young sheriff in Gavin Frakes. Be interested to see, and the coaching staff, I think, as well, what he can do going forward. He'll take some gambles here, take some chances to to make some things happen in a hurry with 135 left on the clock. Interesting choice of words there. A big possession for some that are watching this game late night. He Passes can throw. caught on first and 15, close to the line to gain. And he has shown enough in a short period of time to warrant a deeper look as they get ready for Minnesota in a couple of days. 14-yard game for Cordell David. How juicy is that game going to be? Jerry Kill going back to Minneapolis. There's been some words exchanged in the press with P.J. Fleck, his former assistant. There's another strike across the middle. Fastball received by Brady. And this may be a, a where they, they put this in for him. Take the thinking out of it. Just go operate the offense. Call it two-minute offense. Go play. Frakes with time. Heaves another pass into plus territory. Another first down. Cordell David, the reception. And David now with his sixth catch for 42 yards. He's spinning it as well as I've seen any freshman in his first game ever. I mean, he, he looks the part. Wow. He has the size. He's got the arm straight, the accuracy. We know he's smart enough. Aggies need a quick score and an onside kick. Try to pull off some kind of miracle. Jordan Parker assisting. And they're going to, you know, the coaches are always second-guessing themselves. Why didn't we go to him sooner? After all the turnovers, you just don't know. If he's ready, if it works out any differently. But, boy, he, he looks ready to play. 
Takes again with time. He'll buy some extra seconds. And incomplete. The thing I like as well, he knows when to put some zip on the ball, when to put touch on it, take a little bit off. He's obviously been around the passing game throughout his high school career. 102 remaining. Aggies with one timeout left as well, second down and 10. Then we saw him do what a lot of quarterbacks do around the country, is, you know, pull the ball down and make some, make some yards or great game yards with his legs. Five wide empty backfield for Frakes, the true freshman out of Norman, Oklahoma. Placing Diego Pavia earlier this evening. A deep toss out of bounds, contact. No penalty marker yet until now. Asissima in coverage and working against. That's off the back David foot again. And he throws it about five yards in front of the intended receiver. Pass interference, defense, number 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. You know, Andre, you're mentioning the fact that Frakes likes to use his feet and make plays with his legs. I'm impressed with the freshman going deeper into his progressions, too, watching him field level. Like, he's not locked in on one receiver. Yeah. He's hit the second, third receiver multiple times. This kid is for real. Sometimes you get reads where you scan from one side of the field back. He's been able to do that as well, and throw accurately. Breaks straight ahead, pocket collapse quickly. Keeps the play going, stop near the 10. It'll be second and two with time winding down after a gain of seven. Or I might call a timeout there. A lot of time is running off the clock that this, this offense needs. Simply will spike it here, 37 ticks of the clock left. So you need the down and you need the time. Take the time out. Take a time out there, and then you're not rushing. You don't lose the the seven, eight seconds that you had before that time ran off. And you still have a down in your pocket. Third and three. have fought for four quarters. Had a brief 2-0 lead. Nevada came back. And a delay of game penalty here is going to back up the Aggies five. Which even more of the reason the field why you're middle. taking that field, I mean, taking the timeout. I think you, you need the touchdown. Go ahead and take it here or try to get it in here, and then the onside kick comes into play. Then so no field goal trying to get the onside kick to get the eight points after that. It was harder to get the touchdown sure. with less time on the clock. Go ahead and do that now. Especially from the 15-yard line. Third down and eight after the delay of game penalty. Thomas in the backfield, breaks to the end zone. Has a man looking for Powers, and it's going to be picked off. Intercepted, Tyson Williams. The Wolfpack secondary has been on fire tonight. Boy, he baited. The young freshman into throwing this one. As I was thinking, he's got single coverage out to his left, but you can't look over there. And Williams saw him take a peek, and he just took off from center field over to that side of the field and was just able to get, actually got both feet down inbounds. An athletic play. Ken Wilson told us this week, we've got to dial down Tyson Williams at practice on occasion because he's so intense. The effort's always there. Yeah, just loves the game. Loves to play, whether it's during a game and he comes up with a huge interception here or it's in, pra in practices you just described. When he puts his pads on, he's coming to play. Nevada will secure the road victory. Five takeaways tonight, including four interceptions forced against a pair of first-year quarterbacks at the FBS level. And the Wolfpack defense... An emerging story in Nevada with two quality quarterbacks tonight. Ken Wilson, a successful head coaching debut. Game number one in the books, and the dub is as well. I expect New Mexico State to play a lot better, even if it's a four-day turnaround. 
Uh, they didn't have any significant injuries that we know about. It will be Minnesota's first game action. They will learn a ton from tonight's game and take it into next week's game against Minnesota. Countdown begin for that one. Nevada with five takeaways. Toa Tawa rushes for over 100 yards. Devontae Lee scores two touchdowns for head coach Ken Wilson. A successful debut as he re-arrives back in Reno after 19 years as an assistant. Final score once again, 23 to 12. The Wolfpack over the Aggies. For Andre Ware and Paul Carcaterra, I'm Roy Philpott saying good night and thanks for watching so long from Las Cruces.